the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. I want to go ahead and give you a quick uh, uh, synopsis of what we talked about today. And I, and I, I changed the topic because I've started off with the kind of topic called to be two types of churches, the those that obey Christ and those that disobey Christ. And I changed it more to line up with the scriptures so that people, if they're going to discuss it and debate it, they can at least line up with what scripture I'm coming from. And I'm coming from Romans chapter 8. I'm talking about verse 6. We're talking about being being caught in the mind of spiritual light. So this is what I want to do, and and because what I've seen so much, and I think most of them agree now, we have become so comfortable. You know, I can't say we have, because I see based on history that we have done card we've been acting on the cardinal flesh and cardinal reality for a very long time. But it's called two types of Christians, spiritual mind and cardinal mind. That verse that goes to that is Romans 8, 6. So when you talk to your pastor and you talk to your minister, you talk to your fellow believers, you ask you, you what I want you to do is assess whether you are cardinal. Are you cardinal Christians? And then what I do encourage you to do, what we talked about today was Google, go do word search, go to the library, have you want to say, look up the atrocities first of religion, religious people or religion and how much religion has uh, driven people to do mass killing and murders and torture and some very inhumane things. And then if you want to talk about the, the, the our Christianity itself, then you go and look up look up the atrocities of Christians and you'll see that we, we got to, and you know it, starting from the crusade all the way to the transatlantic slave trade, all the way to the slavery all the way through the Jim Crow laws and all those things and all the way to this day we see where people have dehumanized people to justify the behavior. Now we're seeing it even between political parties where somebody is sitting there just because you're part of this party uh, we're going to hurt you, we're going to kill you, we're going to dehumanize you. Both sides to a degree but one side in particular is really putting down uh, a lot of rhetoric of talking about physically hurting somebody. Uh, even in Christianity, we talked about the fact that the evangelicals and so forth talking about abortion with the with the the inciting people to go blow up abortion clinics and and then put uh, pregnant women or women who commit abo ador uh, abortion put them in jail. You know, it, it's just a lot of things that people would do in the name of their faith, their religion, and in our case, Christianity. So we need to fit there and say, do we need to operate and try to deal with things from the cardinal level or from the spiritual level? You know, God is the spirit in John 4, 24. God is the spirit, and those who worship him must worship his spirit in truth. And we've been called to preach the good news, not be militant. And we talked about the fact is that even uh, Christianity did not start off, nor is it nor are the teachings of Christ about violence. But when Rome took over and the church was accepted as the state religion, it became a banner also to be more militant. And that's where the crusade came in. And the viciousness and the, the, the terrible thing that was done in the crusade, look it up and read it for yourself. We, as believers, we, it's time for us to let our light shine and show people who are the real Christians. Meaning, and I'm talking about spiritual Christians. We have spiritual-minded Christians, not cardinal-minded. So real quick, I want to go ahead and read the, uh, the scripture I'm coming from, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and get into the study. So right here, like I said, two types of Christians, spiritual-minded and cardinal-minded, coming from Romans 8, 6. But let's go ahead into those scriptures. I want to read it real quick. Uh, it's like this. Romans 1, 8, I mean, Romans 8, 1, all the way to 8, 6 is what I like to read as, as the foundation where I'm coming from. He said, there therefore no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus walking after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and it was weak to the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, listen y'all, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the date on the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Now, what I'm trying to say, if you look at what we just read, and you go back and read it for yourself, all the things from the lynching, all the things from the slave trade, all the things from the crusade, all the things leading them to the day. If you call yourself a Christian, if you use any cardinal weapons, any fleshly tools to try to make somebody be a Christian, to try to make somebody line up to be righteous, to make somebody to be what you think they're supposed to be as far as being holy, you can't do it because cardinal tools does not make you holy. Is only the spirit, the righteousness of Christ that's given to you as a gift. And if it's given to you as a gift, and the only thing for other people to do is receive the gift or continue to be what they are. But you are not cardinal. Remember that, amen? I hope you enjoyed the study. And listen to these introductions more than anything else because that's what we're trying to come to. Let's stop being cardinal Christians and let's stop being spiritual Christians. Amen? God bless you. God loves you. I will go ahead and make the, uh, the session available next, buy them up in uh, A, B, and C, and D. And also, I'll go ahead and make sure that you uh, get these out as soon as possible for you can digest them one day at a time or every other day. And also, remember this, subscribe. And, and make comments, too. I'll receive them. I, I mean, at least I'll, I'll read them. <laughs> God bless you. Take care. Those four people party. voted for him. Yes. But and yet, people, yeah, you know, the... The, the hypocrisy. This is hypocrisy. Yeah. Let, let's call it that. Those who operate in balance is operating in hypocrisy. Those who operate in discrimination, everything is operating in hypocrisy. You, 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 that, now you see where I'm coming from when I'm talking about two types of Christians, and I agree with yeah. you. It's, it's, it's the, there's one that's called himself a Christian, and then those who are Christians, uh, then we got to watch out for this, this one. What are the big? Here's other. Look at that last slide. You probably read already. What 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 is the biggest complaint about Christians? Oh man, that uh, the faith is it's a faith of violence, Woo. corruption, a, superstition. I, you always hear superstition, mm -hmm. polytheism, homophobia bigotry, pontification, abuses of women's rights, sectarian. Yeah, and, and, and those, 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 those are things that, those are just some of the, the descriptions, right? They all line up with the doctrine, I mean, of the, the works of the flesh. Those was found in Galatians 5. The, you know, the works of the flesh, and it talks about adultery and, uh, and uh, fornication and you know, envy and jealousy and all that other stuff. That is what, and let me get off this. The people, that is what people see. Christ even said, you know, when we talk about the, the new commandment I give you, mm -hmm. to love one another. As I love you, did you also love one another? But 35 was the key one. 35 said, and men will know that you are my disciples for the love that you show one another. And so therefore, if you, that he's basically saying people will see you 
And you need to understand that you're not, first of all, I think you need to come up to me, and this is everybody. You need to make sure people understand, I have not arrived. I am not all that in a bag of potato chips. I am, I am only righteous because of him, not because of me. I have still got issues to work on, and therefore, I can relate to anybody who wants to come into the gospel, to the body of Christ, knowing that, look, you need to come. And I, I remember uh, one of my brothers said there and said, I don't, I don't agree with you coming as you are. Well, what, what, how else can you come? Yeah. Well, the, the problem is you can come other ways, but that's not what that is meant. You know, you'll have a lot of people say come as you are, but then they have they have qualifications. And the thing is that yeah. only qualification is to believe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, it, you, you don't look like we look. You don't talk like we talk. You don't act like we act. You don't speak, you know, in the way that we speak. So something's wrong with yeah. you. But yeah, yeah, come as you are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, come, I come heard uh what's his name? Uh I can't remember this this uh this pastor's name. It's on TV. Um talks country. Mm -hmm. He doesn't preach, he just basically just talks. Um gosh, I can't remember his name, but he said they were <laughs> They were at a picnic and there was some homeless people there and they came over and so they offered them some food. You know, they showed them kindness and everything and told them wow. to come on out to the service and whatnot. And they just loved on them and everything. And so they did. Mm -hmm. And so they said, when they came to church, she came in some Daisy Dukes with her behind hanging all out, you know, a little tied yeah. up shirt. She came with your head, that's, before. Yeah. That's how she dressed. She didn't know no man. Exactly. But yet the congregation had an issue. You know, they were looking down their nose at her and everything. And so he just showed love. Yeah. You know, they came there, you know, seeking what they were presenting. Exactly. Which was the love. And so it drew them in. Yeah. But yet once they are in, then they get, you know, folks looking down their nose at them. And, so he, and, yeah. he he asked her to come up and, and if she wanted to say anything and because uh, she wanted to give her life to Christ and everything. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and she got up there. She said, this is the best bleep, bleep, bleep I've ever experienced in my life. And everybody was like, and yeah. he just he just kept the mic there because that's who she was. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit had not dealt with her right. in those areas. And it's not up to us to Come change on. somebody we just give the gospel that's and we allow the holy to spirit to do his work exactly within them yeah by hearing and hearing by the word of god so you know we're, we're trying to put forth this image that is pretty much a false image exactly when that's we when we get into these different types of religious mm -hmm. action yeah, you know, uh, you you got to wear a suit, you got to wear a long dress, and all Come this on. stuff. Now, I mean, Facade. there's appropriate dressing, but that comes with love. Yes. You know, you you know, uh, uh, next time when you come, can mm -hmm. you cover up? Because you know, we believe in being modest so that we're not uh, exposing ourselves and causing people to, you know, look to be at. Tempted. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah. it's just not saying you have to do that. And if you don't have the clothes, you know, we understand. Matter of fact, he said, so they went and took up a, 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 a clothes donation. They said okay. them women gave up all kind of good clothes. Come on now. To cover Come on. that woman up yeah. so that their husbands wouldn't be too. Exactly. <laughs> they, they, look, they had an agenda to say, look, I'm, yeah. trying to, I'm trying to not only get you right, yeah, and get you to track the right time, man. Eyes off of you. Yeah, exactly, so. exactly. But like you're saying, you know, uh, since the garden, God's word has been hijacked. Yeah, 
and, you know, and, and, so we, yeah. we got to really, really look at, you know, I don't know, well, I do know, I always go to this, and it's the, the, the root cause of everything is the enemy. Mm -hmm. And you look at his tactics from the beginning, yes. and it just plays out through time, centuries, centuries. Time. Same you know, play, he got, he got same the playbooks. So, he got the same playbooks. Yeah, so he hijacked God's word mm -hmm. and used it for his benefit. Yeah. So did Europe hijack yeah. God's word Just hijack it. for the benefit of themselves. Rome hijacked. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they can't defeat it. They they tried, didn't they? So they hijack it and then they infiltrate mm -hmm. and then they, you know, they get in that way. And that's all the enemy's tactic is. He has, he can't get in no other way yeah. but to present himself as an archangel, our archangel, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and to get in and just move the, move the road just a little bit off. Come on now. You know, one degree <laughs> That's a is a whole lot when you go further down the road. Right. You Especially know, you're so far away, <laughs> you may start off real close at first. Yeah. Yeah. But once you get down the road, that one yeah. degree is way off kilter. Way off. So, yeah, because so, when, <laughs> when you think about it is when Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one yeah. can follow but me. You can you can visualize a path of one person, yeah. one line. He yeah. said, follow this way, right? And, the, and his way is not broad. He no. said narrow and straight is the gate, right? Mm -hmm. And so what people try to do is I'm gonna force you to stay on this. Is what they, this is what doctrine of man come in at is I'm gonna force you to stay on this narrow path. Yeah. And 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 people and, and look bad thing about it. Here's the bad thing about it. We talked about it week before is that 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 beam in your eye. Yeah. You got this big <laughs> beam. This is this is this is the 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 types of Christians out there, you you got a big beam in your eye, you act like people can't see it. Come to talk about a spiritual beam, you know, and, and you're trying to take motes out of somebody else's eye. <laughs> but they're looking at you, they're looking at your anger, they're looking at your envy, they're looking at your jealousy, they're looking at your hate. See, a lot of people want to sit there and say, I want to know, we want to focus on the club. You went to the club last night. You end up doing coming to here because you went to the club last night. Uh, you dress, oh, you dress, you dress like a whore, you know. But hey, this, how about you hate like a whore then? You, you hate like a demon. You, yeah. you, you, you spit at people. You bite. That was something my sister, one of my sisters that said, call you bite. When they mean bite, they mean they, 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 they go off on you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so people, in other words, you forgot the other things. And in some cases, this is how I look at it. Many have taken on the role of the Sadducees and Pharisees. That they were so legalistic in their forcing the law that they forgot what the whole intent of the law was for. For the love. They were going God, go ahead. do things above and beyond what the law required. They would they would put that on believers. Yes. But yet they wouldn't even do what the <laughs> law required. Exactly. That's what they added on to it, you know. <laughs> If they would just do what the law required, they would be fine, but they were adding it. They had more to what the law required to give these people a hard task and then sit there and look all high and mighty, you know, like they're perfect. And yes. so and, and this is this is the pattern mm -hmm. that we're getting caught up in. And That's we're holding we ourselves right. up and we're looking at ourselves as being more than. Mm -hmm when we're actually less than i mean a a, a a new believer is is has less to deal with than somebody who is mature yes because the mature you are the more you know the yes. more you're responsible for yes. 
you can. And the, the, you know, and the more you have to deal with, and the more you're required. Too much mm -hmm. is given, mm -hmm. much is required. Right. So, you got much knowledge and revelation, then must understanding, love, and compassion. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That was uh, my, my brother. -in -law. He said loud. Yeah, he says I was loud. Oh, he preached. Well, I, I get excited. <laughs> I, I do too. I even got the uh, earphones on my head so I can hear you. But I, I got mm -hmm. the speaker so I can talk. So they, they can't even hear me probably. They can hear you. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, we're sorry. we sorry I, about I'm, that. I'm going to try and, 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 and control my excitement about this, but... Uh, yeah, I'm it's, excited. It's, 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 it's this is this is what well, it, it stirs me up and it exactly. gets me excited and uh, it's it, I don't even notice it. <laughs> I know I but, agree. I agree because that's when we talk about the good part. That's when we talk about the good news. But at the same time, we're talking about even recognizing the contrary to reality, basically that that people see. People see. They, they, you know, the bad side, the violence, the the anger, the the they see all those things that are contrary to Christ, mm -hmm. and and they have a, you know, the, the friend I talk to, talk to, talk about a lot, talk to a lot of time. He has a just point. We're we're more looking like a ministry of violence, but we imposing our will on people, you know. And, and and people, you know, as we move on in time, people don't tolerate that. Uh, but I, I do encourage people to look up the some of these these uh, articles. Just just look them up, so you can sit there and say how people look at you, and how you need to understand what is the doctrine of Christ. I don't care. It doesn't matter what ministry you go to. It doesn't matter what family you come from. If you profess to be a Christian. Find it, make sure you read the scripture for yourself to see the doctrine of Christianity. Same thing you come into the Air Force, same thing you come into the Army. What I'm saying is if you're going to be an Army person, then you got to operate the way they say you're supposed to operate as a person in the Army. you got to wear the uniform. <laughs> yeah, they, they, uh, you just can't say you in the Army. You can't say you in the Air Force. Matter of fact, you can't say that you have a specialty Air, Air, well, Air Force specialty code. And, and not show fruits of that Air Force oh. specialty code, you know? Because there's, there's a lot of people in the Air Force, right? But not everybody can repair aircraft, <laughs> right? And, and, and that's the point we're talking about is we have a lot of people in Christianity. All of us can follow the doctrine of Christianity and show the fruits of being a Christian. That's, that's all we're trying to say, you know? Uh, and that's what I'm trying to encourage because I look at the atrocities. Uh, matter of fact, I, we, I've asked you one time before, where, where, matter of fact, I don't think I asked you personally before, but I'm asked, but we talk about it. And, and, I, and I, I, I'm hoping that those who may listen sometimes is, where did the dehumanizing of people come from that gave you permission to treat them badly. Even if you try to, because I know they did it with Jesus, right? They called him a sinner, right? And and that was the excuse to, to an eventually kill him, right? Uh, they, they, the, the man was born blind. Let me come off this for a second, then I'll come back on it. The, the man that was born blind, they brought him in and they said, we know. You remember that one, right? This is it's because it's it's the same thing as we see out here. Uh, we know this man is a sinner. And and the blind man said then said, I don't how do you, how do you know he's he's almost basically, I'm gonna kind of paraphrase a little bit, because he basically said, How do you know he's a sinner? Because I was blind. <laughs> But now I can see, and you you calling him a sinner. He he he. You know he. That's when he kicked him out. 
They said, uh, he said, we know that God doesn't hear a sinner. When, when have you ever heard of a sinner <laughs> over the eyes of a man born blind? When, when, did, when did you hear that? And 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 they he basically started ministering to them and they, they started, they kicked him out. They said, uh, you, you, could the man even ask for didn't it? You really know what's that part of scripture? This is a good one to bring up one day in another study. All the school, everything faith comes by hearing anyway, right? Hearing and hearing. So bring it up one day again, or bring it up. But the point is, the man asked them, the blind man, now no longer blind, said, Do you want to be a disciple still? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I guess he was saying, The way y'all asking all these questions, you, I guess you're just trying to pinpoint and make sure that this, this you need is to the be real deal. Ask him that, you know. Be a disciple of him and learn. <laughs> right. Because I'm just a, a disciple now. Yeah, yeah. I'm follow and, him now. And you know, here's the key thing, guys. Check this out, Brother Asher. They sat there and said, you born all together in sin, try to teach us. Mm -hmm. Catch that, catch that. Expound that from you from your perspective because I, I, I got a good opinion on what that, what that, that Worship democracy. Wow. What type of church are you? I want to sit there and invite you to listen to the study carefully. And I also want to invite you to look up the history of religion. And I'm talking about look at the atrocities of religion. Look at the atrocity of the Christian church. Look them up because there's a lot. And why I'm saying that, the Bible says that a tree is known by its fruit. What fruit are you bearing? That's what we want to discuss. And, and keep in mind, you can always change, revert back, repent, and follow the will of God. So even if you have a history, bad thing, you can always come back to the throne of grace. Because that's what the gospel is about. So I want you to take time, listen to the study, analyze it for yourself, and ask what type of church are you. We got to the point where we had to use, went to the book of Revelation to Church of Laodicea, and what that church was like. And the question is, are you like that church? But if you believe and you want to believe, follow this will. He gave you the Lord, He gave you the Lord's commandment so you can follow His will daily. Amen. All right. God bless you. I see you. Don't forget to subscribe. And and I will break these down into segments A, B, C, D, and whatever it takes to finish it up. But I just want you to analyze it. And like I said, I just want to put out there to you. If you decide that you don't want to believe Christ, if you decide that you don't believe in eternal life, that's a choice you make. And we respect your choice because you make that choice. All we all tell you is that everyone will give every look. My scripture said by faith. That's all I can go by faith in his word. Is that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So you say now or say when you leave this world. That's up to you. God bless you, but I chose to do it now. Make that decision now. I encourage everybody else to make that decision now as well. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the segment, the study that we did this Sunday on the 9th of July. And say, look, yes, sure, Jesus is Lord. Amen? Amen. God bless you. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.